I'd like now to welcome our senior coach, Matthew Nix, to come up, please. Nixie, what did you take out of Saturday's performance against Port Adelaide in the trial games? Uh, yeah, firstly, thank you for coming today. Uh, look, from the weekend, I think, obviously two games. Um, first things first, we've got work to do still, uh, and we are. We're head down and working hard, but I think what we showed on the weekend was great depth. Uh, you know, the fact that the first game we had a number of players who um, you met tonight, briefly, very briefly, um, step up and perform really well uh, in Sam Berry, Riley Thilthorpe. Uh, also saw Tariq Newchurch um, surprise a lot of us with um, how clean he was with the footy. And so from that first game, we, we take a lot of optimism. We take a lot of uh, encouragement that um, we're going to have some great depth moving forward. We're, we're going to be young. Um, with that comes inconsistency, but we're, we're training that at the moment. We're going to try and fast track that as, as much as we can, uh, these young guys' development. Um, but to have pressure from below on our senior side is something that uh, we can't be undervalued. So I was really pleased to see that first game, but I've only mentioned three of the players, but I thought right across the board they, they put a great performance out on the field. Another part of that game was also the fact that our top-ups, who Michael Godden had done some fantastic work with, along with his support uh, coaches, I thought they uh, integrated really well, considering at this point they're they're unable to train with our, with our group due to some of the protocols. But, uh, so from the first game, yeah, really impressed. And then second game, that's probably where, uh, as a coach, uh, we're always looking at how we get better. Um, we have work to do. We probably lacked some of that consistent game plan, some of the style you would have seen in the last six rounds of last year. Uh, it took us uh, the majority of the season last year before we were able to expose it and, and show you what it is we're going to look like going forward, but I thought our guys did that really well last year. Unfortunately, some time out of the game, um, you know, not playing against opposition uh, can just take you back a step, and I thought we, we did that on the weekend. I thought we went back a step. and Not taking anything away from our opposition, the other mob, um, you know, we have to respect the fact that they are, at the moment, in a really strong position. Uh, from a list point of view, um, you know, where they currently sit, they're, they're, they're going to be up there fighting for it. So. What a perfect way to start uh, 2021 by, by going up against them twice. Um, we'll have a look and we've already gone over what the performances we had on the weekend. Uh, we've looked at the areas we're going to improve on and one of those is obviously centre bounce. Uh, our ability to fight in there was really disappointing on the weekend. We, we lost that stat 6-22. And so you can, as you can imagine, that's, we spent a fair bit of time in our back half on the day. But overall, Sam, uh, to answer your question, um, yeah, really optimistic about where we're heading, really confident we've got a great group of uh, lads going into 2021. I think that sort of flows on from the, from the top down. We've got, we're starting to get some real stability in our club now. Um, I think that was shown again in the previous couple of weeks with our, our nominations for our leadership group. Um, obviously no change there and um, it's great to see Sloaney get the, the nod with the captaincy again. Um, we'll talk us through the process there and, and you know, was he a standout and, and the other guys that are putting their hand up for it? Yeah, there's obviously a process. We, we want to do the right thing. We have a governance around how we select that captain, but behind closed doors, Sloane and I were, were head down going to work. Um, quite surprised when we were announcing, I said to him, well, I wasn't looking at it any other way, were you? And he was really confident. The way he captained last year, and you'll get a really good look at that uh, with an Amazon documentary that's coming out shortly where, where Rory was followed for the entire year. Uh, we may not have had results on the field from a win-loss point of view, but you're going to see how um, incredibly uh, talented he is as a leader and, and the way he carries himself off field, uh, both with footy and with, with his family. So uh, he was a standout. Uh, I canvassed the playing group, um, both informally and, and through a, an unofficial vote, um, and he was a standout from a, a voting point of view as well. Um, as far as our leadership group goes, again, um, you know, on field, People would say, well, are we performing off-field? To finish a season the way we did was a credit to our leadership group and the support that they gave Rory through what was a really challenging time. Um, so, again, that was unanimous. Um, we obviously had some fantastic support from, from some of the senior players, you know, in Tex. Uh, you know, the position he's in, the, the pressure he's under because he's such a character, he's such a... You know, it's a very much a love-hate thing with Tex. We love him. Uh, the other mob hates him. 
and he gets a lot of attention. What he did behind closed doors, and, and we were able to celebrate that during the year with with one of his milestones. And um, he was outstanding all year as far as leadership goes. And we've also got another, uh, you know, a lot of other players who are stepping up um, that aren't in our leadership group as such, but are, are no doubt emerging. I'm talking about the likes of Rory Laird. Um, Andrew McPherson down back, you know, just some standout characters and really exciting Lockie Shoal of where we're heading in the future. Yeah, I think, um, you know, to re reiterate what the chairman said earlier, you can really see, I guess, the guys, um, you know, we've had a lot of changes in the last couple of years, but the guys are, you know, flat out at training. You, you see them, you almost have to pull them back at times. But you can see with the nine guys here tonight, you know, right from Riley um, to Tariq, we've got, you know, plenty of depth in our our uh, young guys coming through now. Um, how exciting is it? And, and as a coach, I guess, do you sort of got to try and hold the guys back or just let them go? Or, um, it's obviously very exciting to watch, though. I'm sure we have a few questions around whether we're holding them back or letting them go. Um, it was interesting when the boys came up. I think when you, when you hear the likes of Sam Barry speak and, and Luke Pedler speak, um, you know, really um, natural uh, country boys who are super passionate about footy and um, they've still got some work to do on, on exactly how we want to play, uh, but what I can guarantee you with those guys is if there's a ball there to be won, they're going to go and get it, um, which is really exciting for us. Uh, Riley's, Riley's going to be the biggest question that everyone wants to know about. Uh, he played um, a really solid game on the weekend. Just to give you an understanding of what Riley's gone through last season, uh, was really interrupted for him at, at his local club, West Adelaide challenged him through the season. He had some issues keeping himself going in and out. So we're, we're really keen to build a base um, from a physical point of view with him, make sure he's got a strong base under him. Once he gets up and going, we'd like to know, you know, know that he's going to be in there for the long haul. So staying fit and being able to see out a season. Um, in saying that, I can't tell you whether we'll be playing on Sunday as yet. We haven't made that decision. Uh, there's no doubt uh, from a talent point of view, we. Uh, we picked up a fair bit of talent through the draft and Riley is no exception to that. And um, we'll need to make some decisions around that on, on what's best for the group. We're looking at a long-term view. Um, as I said, we, we need to have patience. Um, there's going to be some challenges this year uh, when it comes to our, the way our group play. And um, I, I know from experience that uh, if you look, if you go back and working for the other mob four, four six years ago, working with the likes of Carl Amon, Darcy Byrne-Jones, Hamish Hartlett, Tom Jonas. Um, those players are now sitting right up the top playing out and looking at premierships. I can guarantee you we have those players in our group at the moment. Uh, and it's only a matter of time. Uh, I know we'll fast track that. Um, and you'll be really pleased to see these guys come through and play footy, whether that's on Sunday or whether that's you know, maybe a number of rounds into the season. Um, you'll, I guarantee you'll see some good footy. I guess the other part of that is, is the coaches. Um, we've seen, obviously, a few changes once again in the off-season. Um, brought back a club favourite, Nathan Van Burlo, James Riley from Geelong, Scott Burns, Marco Bello from Hawthorne. Um, how important are these guys going to be, I guess, in nurturing the talent coming through? And I guess, you know, you look at that list and they've all come from clubs who have had success recent times with premierships. Um, they're going to have a big, in, uh, big input on, on the future of these guys. Yeah, yeah, spot on. We, um, I mean, it was something we looked at um, early on in the piece. Was uh, it was how do we improve? How do we get better? And that was that was prior to even playing games. Everything's about always looking to the future and trying to get ahead of the game. And obviously, the the targets that we've gone after have have had success. Uh, have been at clubs that are successful, and and we have a huge respect for for all of those clubs and especially some of the coaches. Um, a lot of the IP that comes across, it's always nice to know exactly what the what the opposition are trying to do. Um, there's not that much um, difference between a lot of game plans, but there is an art of, of how you actually implement that game plan. So to have Scott Burns on, um, from an experience point of view, Scott's just slotted straight in as, as my senior assistant, you know, very much my right-hand man. Um, Nathan coming back, uh, I'm sure a lot of you would have had the pleasure of meeting Nathan uh, across the journey. Well, you don't get much better, a much better person than, than Nathan. So to have him and his family back uh, at the club is, uh, I think, a real bonus for us. James Riley is he's probably the one that has flown under the radar, you know, to spend 20-odd spend years with Geelong, the Geelong Footy Club and uh, what he's, the jobs he's done whilst he's been there and the tasks he's taken on. Um, he has slotted straight in and, and, and been a real asset for us right from the start. 
you mentioned Marco Bello, who's also come on as a head of development. Marco's spent a lot of time with Hawthorne right throughout that, that period of development. Um, and Tim would have also worked with, with Marco as well. So really pleased to have those guys on board and, and also really pleased to have the guys that we had last year. We got Michael Godden looking after our SNFL side. Um, Brent Riley, you know, still helping out Scott with our defenders. Matty Wright working with our forwards. Um, we've got a fantastic coaching group, um, as well as staff right across the board. You know, the high performance group that we've got in place at the moment, uh, are smashing PBs right across the board. Um, not just our young players, Rory Sloan's throwing out bench press that he's never thrown out before. Daniel Talia got a PB two days ago in the gym. Like, so this is the sort of work the guys are doing. Um, and it's a credit to everyone who's involved in our footy department at the moment that our players are driven at this point in time. Maybe off being humbled last year, maybe off some embarrassment from last year, but no doubt we're, we're hungry to make up uh, and improve really fast. Thanks very much, Nixie. I think we're all really excited to have the season um, you know, back underway within a couple of weeks and obviously really excited to get the guys back out here at Adelaide Oval and in front of all our um, members and fans. So um, thanks very much.